Hey y'all, Irix guy here. Now several of my fans have asked the same question, and the first question is typically, what's the video editing software that you use? And then the next question is typically, which computer would you suggest for running that software? Now, I do all of my video edits within Final Cut Pro 10 exclusively now. I've been doing that for the past few years, and it's a, uh, in my opinion, it's a very powerful yet easy for someone that may not have a background in video production to be able to use. A lot of the features are drag and drop. It seems to be very simple to, uh, to not only edit the content, but also to organize the content. Uh, so what I'm doing for you within this video is I'm going to talk through my suggestions, and these suggestions will cater to both someone that budget may not be a concern, and then also someone that wants to become involved in Final Cut Pro Final Cut Pro 10, but they may be on a tighter budget. So I'm going to cover all spectrums here. So for starters, I'm going to talk about what I use and the system that I use in uh, in Apple terms is really not the highest end Final Cut Pro 10 solution. So what I'm going to do is talk through all of this and then check the link within this video's description to snagbear.com. That's my website and you will find everything. I've laid it all out, everything that I'm talking about within this video. So you don't have to go anywhere else. Just check the link within this video's description to snagbear.com, and I've got everything listed for you. So you can research more and figure out what you may want to do. So the computer I use is an iMac with Retina. And again, everything, it and everything that I'm about to talk about is listed within the link within this video's description. So I'm not going to go into specs. And I like the iMac with Retina because I can, I can store all of my videos externally. Now the advantage to that is that there are Macs, most of the modern Macs are Flash based. So you, know, you can get one that has Flash, you can get one that, uh, that has a traditional hard drive, you can get one that has a combination which is what they refer to as Fusion. Traditional hard drive is going to be slower. Traditional hard drive is going to have a larger storage capacity more than likely. Now if you go with a combination of Fusion which is flash and traditional hard drive you're going to get a speed boost but you're still going to have that traditional hard drive in there and those hard drives are mechanical so anything that's mechanical it, it produces more heat. My suggestion and what I use and again check the link within this video's description to find the specific model but what I use is the iMac with Retina 5K display and I didn't care about any sort of uh, any sort of extra internal storage. I just went with the bare minimum. And what I do, I store all of my Final Cut Pro 10 video externally. And you can find all of those there. I use the Thunderbolt 2 enclosures that you find there. They're faster than USB 3, but I've also got USB 3 enclosures listed there. So it's really a matter of budget and your future expansion needs. Because it may be that all you may need is is the Mac and then an external uh, USB hard drive. And I've got one of those listed there as well. So think about, don't think about today, but think about tomorrow. So are you someone that, are you a casual video editor, maybe one video every few weeks or so? Or are you like me where you're editing multiple videos throughout the day and uploading multiple videos to YouTube? Now, I don't retain all of my video content. Like right now where I'm speaking in front of a green screen, I will not keep my face on video part. But what I will continue to retain are the, are the backdrops because I repurpose those over and over uh, for my green screen work. And you can find my green screen tutorial within the link within this video's description too. I step you through step by step how I do my green screening, my chroma keying. So that's the solution I use. Now there's even a faster solution, and again you can find it within the link within this video's description as well, that's called the Mac Pro. It's faster than the iMac with Retina that I use. Now if you really want to get in on a budget, you could. there's some other options to consider. And I've listed there laptops, and obviously with that you've got the portability component, and I've listed the laptop that I use, and it's somewhat a bare bones uh, MacBook Pro configuration, but it works well and I use it for my field computer. I use my iMac with Retina 5K display for my studio computer. But the beauty of it is if you use multiple computers like I do and you store externally, it's easy to, to create a new Final Cut Pro 10 library in the field. And check out my tutorial on that as well. 
But basically what a library is, it's a, uh, think of it as the big box, and then inside you've got smaller boxes. So for example, I go to a filming location, and let's say I'm there for five days, and I'm shooting two different cameras. I'll create a library in Final Cut Pro 10 that's entitled whatever that destination is. And then I'll do day one, camera A. Day one, camera B. So I've got the content organized by the day and then the camera that was used to film it. And then going forward, it would be day two, camera A. Day three, or day two, camera B. So forth and so on. And that just makes it easy to store that content in the field and, and check out that extra hard, external hard drive that I use for field use because I'll collect, uh, as I film stuff at the filming location, I'll download it from my cameras day by day and keep it organized on that external hard drive. And then that way when I return to the studio, I simply plug in that external hard drive to my iMac and copy it over to my massive array of multiple hard drives that are connected to my iMac with Retina 5K display. So from a, from a usability perspective, Final Cut Pro is great, even if you're using multiple computers. So let's say you're, a, you're, you're really a budget user and you want to get into Final Cut Pro 10, but you want to get in as cheaply as possible. So you don't want to go, you don't want to go the iMac route, you don't want to go the, uh, the laptop route, but you want to go with something that's possibly even cheaper. Check out the Mac Mini that I've got listed. Now with the Mac Mini, obviously it's a bring your own, uh, bring your own monitor, mouse and keyboard type deal. You know, it's just the, just the little box. But it is plenty powerful enough to power Final Cut Pro 10. So that may be a way to start out. And if you really want to start out on a budget, you could go that route. You could use iMovie for a while, which comes for free with the, with the Mac OS 10. You could use it for a while, become proficient with it, and then if the need arises to update, to upgrade to Final Cut Pro 10, you could do it at that point in time. Uh, that's another way to, uh, to not get hit with everything at once from a cost perspective. Now, there is something that I want to mention that's very important for Final Cut Pro 10. And again, I've got a tutorial within the link within this video's description that explains this. But... That's the 4K video format. Not everybody's filming in 4K. Everything I film now is in 4K. So I've completely embraced 4K across all my cameras. But with 4K comes some unique challenges. And a lot of people come in, they said, well, you know, with 4K, it looks grainy when I play it back, this, that, and the other. Keep in mind, of the computers that I mentioned, the only computer that has a 4K or better display is the iMac with Retina 5K. So that means after you've edited the project within Final Cut Pro 10, after you've sent it through compressor, following the workflow that I've listed within this video's description, then that's content that could be, be viewed natively in 4K on the iMac with Retina 5K display. Or you could view it on a, on a 4K smart TV. But just because a computer doesn't have a 4K or greater display doesn't mean, and this is a point of confusion for a lot of people, doesn't mean that it cannot be used to edit 4K. So in other words, if you went with the lesser end iMac, which I've also linked within this video's description, you could still do your Final Cut Pro 10 editing on that. You could export that, uh, that video using the 4K settings. Check out my compressor video for the, with the 4K output settings. And you, would, you wouldn't be able to view it in 4K on that particular iMac, the one without the Retina display, but you could send it over to a 4K smart TV and view it in 4K there. So don't, don't be confused into thinking that your computer has to have a 4K or better monitor if you're going to edit 4K. The 4K monitor only comes into play after that project is exported in a 4K format and if you need to view that video in 4K resolution from that computer. That's when you would need a 4K or greater display. But if you're just editing, uploading to YouTube for others to watch, or you're just editing and viewing on a smart TV by way of YouTube or memory stick or whatever you're using to, uh, to connect it to that smart TV, then you may not even need 
something with a 4K or greater display. And that's another way to save cost. So I hope this helps. I mean, it's... Uh... Oh, and the other thing, if you do go the iMac route, something I would recommend, and, and I've got it linked there as well within this video's description, the 27-inch iMac at least at the time of posting this, that model that's listed there has user accessible memory. So you can open it up and max out the memory. If you wanted to add more memory, uh, that may even better enhance your, uh, your video editing capabilities. It's not necessary, but it's, you know, if you wanted, if you had a lot of stuff going on concurrently, extra memory could be beneficial. So I hope this helps. And again, this is just the video to accompany the detailed information within this video's description on snagbear.com. So drop me a line if you have any specific questions. I'll be more than happy to try to answer. The best way to get me is facebook.com forward slash irixguy. Or if you don't use Facebook, drop me a message on uh, irixguy.com by way of email. Uh, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash irixguy. Y'all have a good day.